What is going on there, Battlefielders? So today my goal is to guide you in the decision making of whether or not Battlefield 1 is worth your hard earned war bonds. So I'm gonna be real with you, this is gonna be unfiltered. I spent roughly 80 hours in the alpha, in the beta, and they were two entirely different experiences which has got me a little mixed emotionally. I don't know how to handle it. Honestly, I felt like the beta was a downgrade. So for those that may not have experienced the alpha, I'm here to help you learn a little bit about the game that you may not have been able to experience. So what is going on? My name is Pwn. I am your designated pre-order fairy for the day, here to help you make the right decision when it comes down to Battlefield 1. If you guys enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe. Lots more Battlefield content in the future. And of course, let's aim for 500 likes. Really helps the channel grow, and it means a lot to me, guys. Let's get the moistness levels overflowing. So... You guys heard it. I felt like the beta was actually a downgrade. That's right, open beta. That's my bayonet you feel in your back squirming around. We had some fun times, but the alpha, the alpha was better to me. And I can chalk this up to two major differences. One of which being the AT cannon presence. It was just not seen at all during the beta, which basically gave an enormous amount of confidence to tank users. They knew that there was no range alternative for infantry, so they could just cause as much chaos as they want. Imagine Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4 even without RPGs. That's a scary thought, isn't it? That is what was so weird. That's why so many people in the community felt like tanks were too strong in the beta. It wasn't necessarily they were too strong, we just didn't have a ranged option to take them down and that was a very bad example to give people that were trying out your game. So, no no, poor decision on you right there, DICE. The entire experience is going to change when the full game comes out. People are going to be able to unlock this thing and it will eventually run just like how other battlefields have been in the past, so don't worry about that too much. The second major difference between the Alpha and the Beta is no surprise. It was the map design. It was poor. The first map, oh my god, that map was so good. So many different ways to play, the city was great, there wasn't too much of a wasted area like the desert in this map, there weren't crazy areas for people to snipe from spawn and stuff, it was a pretty solid design. This map was lazy, and it leaves me room for concern, because they did announce that this was going to be the largest Battlefield experience so far to date in the franchise, these are going to be the largest maps we've had, and they went pretty lazy on this one. My issue is that they could have basically cut this map in half, right underneath where the train tracks were and it would have been an acceptable map. But no, they wanted to double the square footage so they added a completely unnecessary wide open desert that stretched forever and then threw one objective out there with the Tank Hunter Elite class and said boom, done. That's so much wasted potential! You could have put another city out there, made some interesting rock formations, dug in some trenches to lead home point to home point. That way there would have been more ways for infantry to fight the armored train. There's so much they could have done with this, but they left it wide open and that was extremely lazy of them. And to be fair, it's really troubling to think about this because one of their major selling points, something that they're really pitching to bring people in to the Battlefield 1 experience, is the size of the maps, the fact that they're going to be larger than ever in this year's game. But, if they're all done in the same fashion, that's extremely misleading. There's a whole lot of dead area that nobody ever went to. Poor K! So apparently the DICE hate armor train is deployed, and this is not what I wanted to do. I'm very passionate about this game. And like I said, complete transparency for me. I have a few more things I'm going to talk about that were negative experiences for me. And I want to get those out there before we start talking about the good and what I honestly feel about the game. So, number one... There really is no infantry answer to the aircraft anymore either. We don't have Stinger missiles either, and just like that example I gave you earlier about, well, what happened in other battlefields if we took out RPGs? That's kind of how I feel right now. The fact that you have to go prone or mount up, and you can only look up so high with the AT cannon, means there's very limited response to the aircrafts. Infantry can do nothing about them now, and they can completely sweep by in just a few seconds, get to safety, repair, do whatever you gotta do with those things, and that's kind of a ridiculous comfort that they are allowed and only really other aircraft can take down other aircraft well let's just say that doesn't make me feel comfortable as an infantry player and I'm gonna put that aside the bomber was really really strong as well if you had a competent pilot and somebody that knew what they were doing on the gun that thing would be ridiculously strong I'm talking you could probably go an entire game without ever being taken out of the air and drop a hundred kills this thing was very very strong and now that we're talking about things that are too strong this is another area of concern for me this is the fact that there was almost one overpowered gun in every class. Now, not all of them were game-breaking, but this has been one of the biggest areas of weakness for DICE over the last umpteen years. 
there's always been that M16 or AEK. There's always that high rate of fire weapon and that one really, really good weapon that is better than the rest. And this has repeated itself throughout the franchise, and it looks like it's going to repeat itself again. Now, we can look at some of these guns and see the MG15 completely puts the rest to shame. The rifleman embarrasses the rest of the options inside the scout class. A lot of these are very, very slow. Hell, there's a medic weapon that's mag reload and has double the ammo capacity that the rest has. That's a pretty distinct utility advantage. But most of my discomfort stems from the Automatico SMG. This thing is ridiculous, can confidently kill two people per mag. It's a laser at hip fire, and it's got a ridiculous rate of fire. It's basically a baby AEK. Well, technically it's like World War One, so it's like the grandpa AEK, but you get what I'm saying right now. This thing was ridiculous, and for those that never got to use it, you're missing out. You really honestly do not understand how strong this gun is going to be, and it will legitimately cripple the entire experience. Nobody will use anything else when they first learn of how strong it is. I would equip this thing without even trying. I'd go like 50 and 5 every game. Just put yourself back in the beta and imagine they imported the AEK alone into this game. And that's kind of the presence that this gun had. And it's disappointing because I made a big fuss about this during the alpha. It was clearly overpowered and it didn't change at all during the beta. And it leaves me a little worried to see, hey, are they actually going to address this? Or are they just going to let this thing tear things apart? We saw this with the K-10 in the previous Battlefield. We've seen the AEK come back as the dominant powerhouse for a long time. We cannot afford to have these very, very strong high rate of fire weapons out there because none of the other SMGs or even the medic weapons are going to be able to contest this thing. It's just too strong. The only other thing that I had an issue with was some of the sounds. Now, it's not like the actual explosions and sound mechanics were completely off. They sounded good. The game felt good. The music was actually quite exhilarating. They did a really good job overall on that side of the things, but there were times where horses and even tanks could legitimately just creep right up on me, be within a foot of me, and I would have no clue. Sometimes the awareness to your vicinity was crippled because of the lack of sound, and this was a big issue, and I hope this was just a bug and this was not intentional. I don't know how this came to be, but this was a very, very uncomfortable experience with the game. I did not like the lack of hearing available when things were surrounding you. I didn't like it. Mon bit. And that concludes the things that I had issues with about my Battlefield 1 experiences to date. Take that, digest that, do what you will with it, and of course, make a smart decision. So, let's talk about some of the good things. Now, honestly, we buy Battlefield for the experience. It's immersion. You like having the land, sea, and air warfare. We love having large-scale conflicts, maybe some congested small areas to fight in. You can play this game so many different ways. The teamwork is necessary. The explosions, the kits, they're all necessary, and that's what makes this game so good. So if you're looking for that, Battlefield is still true to its core. It's the same as it's always been, and... It's going to be no different with this installment, and that's one of the main reasons I myself am personally going to pick this game up, and I would recommend it to other people. I think they've done a very good job at trying to make an authentic World War I experience. Obviously, they had limitations. Going backwards in time to outdated warfare is a very risky idea in the first place. But to be fair, the only game out there in existence that can probably bring in a World War I game and make it work would be Battlefield. Call of Duty can't bring it in. You don't have the cavalry experience. You don't have the aircraft and the tanks. No other game could really bring you this sort of feel, which is exciting because this generation has never played a multiplayer World War I experience, and this has got me pretty excited. So I like that they brought this in. The addition to horses was really, really cool. I'm a little upset that they can't poop and gum up the train tracks. That's really upset. Dice, you need to get on that. But overall, they did a great job. That's another thing that kind of had me laughing a little bit, is they were they were so into, you know, the horses have emotions. Name your horses. You know, how they won't jump off of cliffs, but it could be sitting still, and you could shoot it in the head, and it would basically just hike up its legs and be like, ow, stop doing that. It was kind of disappointing. I feel like that you should shoot a horse, and it should just run away randomly in a different direction for like 50 meters. I think that would be cool, but yeah, the whole, it's got emotions, until it's being shot in the face four times, and then it's kind of like, fuck it, whatever. I like the pain. The elite classes they've added in are kind of new, but they don't make me feel special. We saw similar things in Battlefront. This isn't really interesting. They're not overpowered like a lot of people had fears of. They are very strong if they get on a tear, but a simple melee can take them down. Some team focus can drop them down. And as long as you're spotting and spreading awareness to your team, these guys should not be able to go on a ridiculous tear. And honestly, some of those need a little bit of tweaking too. The Flame Trooper was a clear winner of that experience. He can nuke a sentry in a second flat, the tank hunter was just laughable at the end of the day. In my opinion, just wasn't very strong. So, 
I like that they've added in new things. They've taken some risks. Some of them have paid off. Actually, most of them have paid off. The introduction of the trains and the airships are really, really cool. They're very, very hard to take down, and they've been preaching for a while that they can change the tide of battle, and they really can. I've seen games where people are down 50 to 100 points and have come back simply because of that. The team that was previously being pounded upon now all of a sudden has a second win. They're able to bring the fight back, and if they use and utilize that, they can definitely come back and win, and I saw it a few times. It can't happen. I have seen some ridiculous comebacks. I mean, things that I've never seen in a Battlefield game before. But even though that's exciting, I am a little disappointed with it. The team that is losing should be the team that loses. Period, right? It only makes sense. I do not like the idea that the losing team gets a handicap. They get their own armored train or airship or something like this. This is a dominant piece of weaponry that's going to change the entire way the game is played. And I don't feel like they should be given this gift. But, I don't know, I'm conflicted. I think it's cool that it's in the game, it was part of the warfare back then, I like the idea of it, but I also don't like giving people all of these extra advantages for losing. It's kind of silly to me. The game is exactly what you would expect out of a Battlefield game. I'd love to leave a long list of things, but if you've played Battlefield before and you continue to buy the game, you know what is good about the game. And this is still true with this experience. I love the game, the guns are great, the warfare's great, the armor's great, the aircraft's great, the new variety of weapons, even though they're old weapons, is still new to us because we've never played a game like this before. So in a way, it's familiar, yet different, which is exactly what you want to capture in a video game. You want it to be so much like the other ones that you've played in the past that you're comfortable with playing it, but you also want to have enough new additions and changes that it feels different at the same time. Going back in time was a very clever way to do this, and it was a very risky gamble, and it looks like it paid off for them, because I would definitely recommend this game. Now, what I would rate this game would probably be about a 7.5 out of 10. I'm going to do a full review when the game drops in a month's time, so definitely stay tuned for that. But as it stands, as just a pure recommendation thing, I think the game's great. I do not think it's going to be as good as Battlefield 4 when it was in its prime after the CTE and everything, but it still should be a very, very solid title nonetheless. I do want to leave you with one little bit of advice. Do not purchase premium right now. I'm not saying don't get it ever, because it is definitely a wise investment, but make sure you play and enjoy the base game before picking this up. Honestly, getting any of the other versions right now is going to just give you a few cosmetic things. Big whoop, who cares? At the end of the day, there's about a whole half a year until the first DLC comes out to this game. You have that long to make a decision on whether or not you want to buy premium. You're not going to really miss out on any legitimate content or anything like that, so take your time. Buy the game. If you find that you're still playing it after two or three months, then yeah, go ahead, pick up the premium, make that decision when the time comes. But there's no need to pump in $120 right now. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Leave your own opinions on the beta and everything down below. Are you going to pick up the game or are you going to pass on it? Let me know. Take care, guys.